And Charles Aruka has some cherry news for Arsenal fans. Here he is with the sports news. Absolutely, Millicent. Welcome to Sports News. Arsenal have won their 10th straight game in all competitions and 7th in the English Premier League with a 3-1 win over Leicester City at the Emirates. Hector Bellerin's own goal gave Leicester the lead in the 31st minute, but Mesut Ozil equalised for the Gunners on the stroke of half-time. Substitute Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang then stepped off the bench to score two quick-fire goals on the 63rd and 66th minutes to give Arsenal a two-goal cushion Leicester could not overcome. The win takes Arsenal to fourth on the log with 21 points from nine matches. Meanwhile, Manchester United manager Jose Mourinho says he's happy at Old Trafford and wants to see out his contract at the club after being linked to the return to Real Madrid. Reports claim the La Liga giants want the Portuguese manager to replace under fire boss Julian Lopetegui, who is reportedly set to be sacked after a run of three straight defeats. But the 55-year-old whose contract runs until 2020 insists he's satisfied with life at Old Trafford and would even like to extend his stay if possible. Meanwhile, Mourinho has pleaded for leniency for Chelsea assistant coach Marco Iani following his conduct during Manchester United's draw at Stamford Bridge on Saturday. Iani hit the headlines after his overzealous celebration in Chelsea's of Chelsea's injury time equaliser, angering Mourinho, who attempted to confront the Chelsea coach. However, Mourinho subsequently accepted apologies from Chelsea boss Maurizio Sarri and Iani himself after the game and thinks calls for him to be sacked are a step too far. In tennis, 2017 U.S. Open champion Sloane Stevens has made a winning start to her debut campaign at the WTA Finals with a three-sets win over Naomi Osaka. Stevens prevailed 7-5-4-6-6-1 after two hours and 22 minutes to extend her head-to-head -head record to 2-0 over the reigning U.S. Open champion. She broke Osaka seven times out of 19 break points, winning nearly two-thirds of points when returning her opponent's second serves. Game set and match to Stevens, and it's back to Millicent with the rest of the news at 10. My thanks, Charles. And he is seven times lucky. Cameroon's president, Paul Beer, as he won a seventh term in office and Paul's mud by low turnout and voter intimidation. The 85-year-old Africa's oldest head of state was re-elected with 71.3% of the vote, according to official result. Opposition calls for a rerun of the presidential election were rejected last week. Cameroon's two English-speaking provinces have been hit by more than a year of violent protests and attacks by separatist rebels, which have left hundreds dead. The British Prime Minister Theresa May is sticking to her guns on the viability of Brexit. May told British members of Parliament that the deal is already 95% complete, but the issue of the Irish border is yet to be resolved. The UK is expected to exit the European Union on March 29, 2019, but the terms of its leaving are being held up by Irish border issue. Speaker, there are some limited circumstances in which it could be argued that an extension to the implementation period might be preferable if we were certain it was only for a short time. For example, a short extension to the implementation period would mean only one set of changes for businesses at the point we move to the future relationship. But in any such scenario, we would have to be out of this implementation period well before the end of this Parliament. British Prime Minister Theresa May, Saudi Arabia's Foreign Minister Abdel Adjubeir has described the murder of dissident journalist Jamal Khashoggi as a tremendous mistake, blaming it on a rogue operation, but denies that the powerful crown prince had ordered it. Khashoggi was last seen entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. The Saudis, under intense pressure to explain Khashoggi's whereabouts, have offered conflicting accounts. They initially said he had left the Saudi consulate on the 2nd of October, but on Friday, 
admitted for the first time he was dead, saying he had been killed in a fight, a claim which met widespread doubt. And the main news again. Kaduna State Governor Nasser al Rufai today vowed to bring those behind the Kaduna mayhem to book, even as mounting tension trailed the killing of three people, allegedly by armed men dressed in military uniforms. Also today, President Mohamed Dubari inaugurated a committee to assess Nigeria's readiness for the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Plus, you heard British Prime Minister Theresa May today disclose that 95% Brexit terms have been agreed. She promised to explore every possible option to break the deadlock in talks. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. Have a good night.